Have you ever attended a rock concert? Imagine no. Ah, you should. Yeah, have it's you? It's fun. Yes, I have. When's the last one? Um, the last one that I attended. Yeah. Was it uh, when there was COVID? That okay. was no lockdown. That's, I think that was last year or last year, but one. Oh. Somewhere there. Uh. Nice. I've never gone. Never yeah. Attended. The next day I had to take a lot of painkillers. Yeah. Because my head was dish, yeah. dish, dish. But you want to know something sad? Mm. When I had a scholarship to study in the US, I missed seeing Trevor Noah, Beyonce, and Kevin Hart because I was too broke to go. Ah, yeah. it's not cheap to enter those kind of... I just didn't have the money. Uh. Kevin Hart was literally a 20-minute bus ride away, and it was a free bus. But, you know, scholarship kid, man. Mm. And then Trevor Noah was in New York, couldn't afford it. Beyonce as well. So whom court. did you see? Nobody. Ah. <laughs> I didn't see any. And I was there for six years. Wow. Artist life, ah. man. Yeah, because I was on scholarship. Mm -hmm. Speaking of scholarships, uh, somebody <laughs> got straight A's. Like, everywhere, somewhere. What school was that? Precious Blood, Rita. Uh. Yeah. Ah. yeah. Kumbe Chopi. Yeah, yeah. Top 100 in Nairobi, actually. Ah. And you know what? I once had, a, I, once had I think he was my, my doctor, mm. ENT. I told him, oh, I'm an actor and musician. Then he said, how badly did you fail KCSC for that to be your only option? No. Yeah. Uh, and then when I said I got, I got straight, straight A's, A's, they'd look at me like, how could you waste your life that way? Mm -hmm. There's a stigma around the arts that smart people can do the arts mm -hmm. and it's wrong. Mm. And actually, I think it's usually smart people who are actually into arts. Yeah. Uh, they're usually very smart people. Yeah. Um, you have toured a lot of places. Which countries have you been to again? Uh, that you've said the US? Okay, in Africa. Uh -huh. Okay, hey, okay. <laughs> now let's start in Africa. In Africa, and again, this is all scholarships, mm -hmm. by the way, because, mm -hmm. you know, my dad died when I was 11, and then my mom raised me and my sister, um, and we've just had a lot of challenges growing up. So in high school, when I was in PB, I I knew that I had to figure out a way of going to university. I just had to. There was no way. I was accepted to KU actually for computer science and psychology. And the only reason I studied abroad was because I wanted to get an arts education. I just wanted to be educated. If there was a conservatory in Kenya, mm. which is one of my dreams, <laughs> whether it's me or it's someone else, I would never have left. Because it's very hard out there when you leave. Um, but in so all this is scholarships. Mm -hmm. So where is the scholarship taken? Uganda, uh -huh. South Africa, uh -huh. Senegal, uh -huh. Morocco, Why? Okay. Swaziland. Uh -huh. still going on. Uh -huh. uh, that's Europe. I mean, that's Africa. Europe, Greece, Italy, the UK, Croatia, Spain, France. No, yeah, and honestly, it's because, let me tell you, there was this thing called Semester at Sea that cost over three million. And my mother sent me the email, like, apply. And we didn't have the money. Uh -huh. But um, I've always been a person of faith. I believe you should jump off the cliff and then pray for the wings to come down. Mm -hmm. Don't get too caught up in the, how am I going to do this? How am I going to do this? How am I going to do this? So I applied for it. And I got in, but we didn't have the money. And it's a long story, but somehow, the school that was at, I was attending on scholarship in India, the United World College of India, just randomly got a full scholarship for you to be on a ship that travels all over the world in mm -hmm. 100 days and goes to 12 countries. Now, again, you would think this was a wonderful experience. And That's what, in my mind, I'm like, wow. Yeah, that but, like but I was with the 1%. I remember there was a girl, she bought earrings in Senegal for 70,000 Kenya shillings. Oh, I thought you said, hey, in Kadani, you Earrings. Uganda. So earrings, when you're uh -huh. now trying to make plans as friends in the countries, you, you're reminded constantly that you don't have enough. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So like, you're there, but you're not really there. You know, money is one of those things. Yep. Uh, um, actually, that, that's really inspiring. And um, one of the things I've gotten there is that you try, I don't, even if they, don't, no one should tell you that it's impossible, it's limited, uh, you can't get in, just try, if you have the opportunity, you go on and try it. And also, work hard in school. Yeah, I'd mm. say, beyond you, working if hard, if you're smart, honestly, then you get the scholarship. working hard, you mm. need to have a vision. 
you need to have a vision of where you want to be. Mm -hmm. And the only person that can tell you it's not possible is yourself. There's so many people that say, I want to start a business, but I want to, I want to do this, but I want to, I want to, but, 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 and that's where all dreams die, mm -hmm. all of them. Because you have to ask, believe, then receive. All right. So, uh, you have a long, let me call it a long career in, uh, <laughs> in film, in yeah. acting. Yeah. Can you, can you tell us a little bit about that? Because yeah. how did you begin? Yeah, mm. how did I begin? Mm. Also, by the way, if you're watching me and you're like super interested in me, at I am Washuka on Instagram and Facebook, mm -hmm. Grace Washuka, that's W-A-C-U-K-A. -A. My handle is at I am W-A-C-U-K-A. -A. Mm. So if you want to know more about these things, I'm very open. I'll share with you resources and if you're interested, All right. I'm, I, re I reply. Yeah. Um, I how did I hard. begin? Yes. I began, like the actual beginning? No, 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 no. Uh, when did you realize, oh, I'm actually in my career is film acting. and acting? Uh. I was 13 years old in Precious Blood Riruta, and there was a Christmas concert. And in my school, there was only one play a year. That's now, again, you see how the arts, people don't value it, you know? Mm. You spend so much time on physics, but you like, well, drama club is like, you know what I mean? <laughs> I was in drama club. Oh, for real? Yeah, I was. Um, oh, where did uh, you go to high school, by the way? Uh, I went to a seminary. Seminary? Yeah. Are you serious? <laughs> wow. A uh, junior seminary. So I was in the oh, drama nice. school and uh, uh, we were pretty good. That's nice. I was also in the journalism club, so it's kind of art, art, yeah, art. Yeah, it's arts. And you know, they say that if you don't expose a child to the arts by the age of 14, they're unlikely to take an interest in it in the rest of their lives. Mm. So you have to get them young. So my decamate in PB, I wasn't even in the drama club, signed me up to be the sub, the understudy to the lead. Mm -hmm. And it's a long story, but I just, it, it was the Virgin Mary. And I just took it as like a job. Like I didn't take it as like, oh, my passion. It was just, you know, and I remember one time the chair lady of the drama club saying, Grace Washuka works the hardest of all of us, and she's not even in the drama club. And one day the director called me and the girl that I was understudying, because the understudy is just supposed to, like in case the main girl gets sick or anything, that's me. And he just always look at her and be like, Washuka, can you just go show her what I'm trying to explain to her? Oh. Washuka, can you just go? And I'm 13, and the lead was only supposed to go to third formers. Mm. Only. I was in form one. There's no way the lead should ever go to a form one. But he just was like, Washuka, go, Washuka. So at some point, he just sat us down. He said, I've made a decision. Grace Washuka is going to be the lead. And then after that, the Christmas concert was cancelled. So for the next... Uh. Five years, uh -huh. I never got to be in another play until I went to India. Uh -huh. so but what I had happened my in introduction. India? India, you know, it was the United World College. I got a scholarship to do that. Love the United World College family. Um, yeah, so I studied theatre there, but it was very book oriented, and I, I was failing actually the classes because I'm a performer. So I remember at some point thinking, "There's no way I can study acting because I'm failing the classes." They didn't. Ha they've changed the curriculum now. So when I went to the States, honestly, it was the Black Lives Matter movement. You know, over mm -hmm, there, mm. I mean, we grew up here thinking being black is celebrated. In the 2000s, remember everybody was black. Yeah, mm -hmm. Missy Elliott, like the, the airwaves the, were the all black. Music was, it was black, all black. Our black culture. It was all black. Sitcoms were black, were black, black people. right? Uh. You know, Aaliyah, Destiny's Child. Tupac, I don't know, Jarul, like it we'll was all black. For the, uh. And their, their music wasn't really talking about the struggle. So when I went to the States and I found out that like over there they shoot you for being black. We had incidents at school. Some girl, she, nigger, go back to Africa. Another time, another girl, a white girl, she called the cops on an African student that mm. was just sitting in the living room. So I got so stressed, I couldn't think. And the only, my mom called me, and my mom had always been against me being an actor, by the way. My mom wanted me to be an engineer. My mom wanted me to do Enough. something safe. A doctor. Safe. Yeah, actually, yeah, for Wait, real. Wait, something safe? Something safe. What do you mean by safe? Safe, according to her, or according to, you know, most African parents, mm. are traditional careers. But now with the economy, uh, safe is not safe anymore. Actually, unsafe is safe. If mm -hmm. you're used to being unsafe, you're safer 
than people who are used to being safe and then they lose their job. Hey, have you, have, you, have, you, have you guys had that issue? Safe for safe, sir? Safe, safe is not, safe is not, if you're, if you're unsafe, like if you pick the unsafe, uh -huh. you're actually the safest one. Because you're used to adapting. In it was matamichi, matatamichi ya, ya luga. So, mm. the, yeah. Yes. <laughs> you're, you're inviting very good uh, yeah. uh, nini, uh, proverbs and wise sayings. Yeah. <laughs> that I had to make them concentrate and hear that. Yeah, uh -huh. and, and by the way, I saw Konga Kiswaili, just in case you're looking at me and you're like, ah, this chick. Ala. You see, she has changed, eh? Kiswaili yeah. ndioyo. Yeah. Lakini kizungu bado unaweza sikia venye kwa crepes. Yeah. Uh, by the way, before we continue, we had asked a question on social media. Yeah. We were asking folks, um, how can you describe the kind of friends that you have? Oh, Not close, know. all of, like, we have the close ones, the cluster ones, the, we have class A, class B, class C, all of them. How would I describe them? Yeah. Um, so I've shared this also on my Instagram and Facebook uh, handle, at I am Washuka, W S U K. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to be a lead on Single Kiasi in season two, only on Showmax, so I'm really excited about that. And the season, the series is about friendship. Uh, which for me is something that I've been thinking about a lot over the last 10 years Moving every two years has had its challenges and strain on friendships mm -hmm. But right now I would describe my friends my closest friends who by the way I've made friends as an adult like you know how people say like it's not possible to make friends as an adult mm -hmm. If you guys didn't start in childhood then do you know that, um, in, you for my that? case, it's different actually. Oh, for same. You've yeah, made, you've uh, made friends in adulthood, close friends. I've made close friends in adulthood. My childhood oh. friends, some of them, I, I don't even know where they are right now. <laughs> but I hope they're safe. <laughs> so if you're a childhood okay. friend and you're watching, uh, please go to my DM and remind me. <laughs> remind me yeah. where you are. Where you are. <laughs> please continue. Yeah. yeah. No, no, no. But um, I would describe them as extremely loyal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and faith-centered people. Mm. I think that's all you need. You just, you know, in today's cancel culture, mm. do you know, like you literally say one thing and it's over. Swipe. Next. Yeah, I'm you, done. You can see what's Posting. happening to Kanye West. You know, uh. like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> you just mentioned cancel, cancel culture. So yeah, cancel culture is so uh, real. Uh. And me, I'm not about that. Um, if we're starting, we're finishing till heaven. Mm -hmm. like, yeah, so they're very loyal. Mm -hmm. And that's also my character in Single Kiasi. I play the character of Olivia in season two. Mm -hmm. You might have seen in some of the posters mm -hmm. um, in the promo. And she's extremely loyal. Uh, when, when we were backstage, you told me about her, the two seconds also uh, series. Oh, that yeah, you featured and then in. I was also on Crime and Justice. Uh -huh. And I also did a feature film in New York. That yeah. was a blessing. But what was the name of the feature film? A New Christmas. Uh -huh. A New Christmas. It's on, it's on Amazon and Showmax. But I do need to plug in my mom, who was like I said, so against acting. And then it was first semester in uni. I was doing computer science, you know, because that's what she wanted. Mm. And I was just really trying to do something else. My mom told me, Washuka, in order to be a musician, you can create the next Spotify. I'm telling her, mommy, that's coding. She's <laughs> like, but it's the same thing. I'm like, mom, music is music. Coding is, like, it's, uh -huh, uh -huh. Like it's coding. They're two different I, yeah, careers. But, she, but I tried. I, I tried. I did computer science for a term. Then one day she calls me and she's like, Mashika, what are you even doing in that school? Then I said, I'm taking a computer science class. I'm taking this class. And she said, you're not doing drama and business? I tell everybody you're doing drama and business. And this woman had been against, lovely woman. That's a typical against, African mother. Had been against it from the very beginning. And then she actually said to me, get yourself into a drama class. Imagine mm -hmm. that energy. Get yourself into a drama class. And that was eight years ago. Mm -hmm. So... Can you say yeah. she inspires, she inspired you to where you are right now? I mean, let me tell you, the other day, I mean, let me the arts are extremely difficult. And I have times when I've sat down with my mom and I'm like, Aki, mommy, I'm a, maybe you were right, I should have been a lawyer. I'm not even joking. Like, if this thing is not a calling, don't do it. Don't do it for the fame, don't do it for the money, don't do it. It has to be a calling because you can, those heights that you see people at, there are unspeakable laws, and we lose people, you know, mental mm -hmm. health. We lose people in those unspeakable laws to addiction, to, do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And my mother has always been the person who's, who notices if I'm not okay. And when I tell her, mommy, like I remember the other day I just said to her, mommy, I'm a, I'm a, this was five months ago before single Kiasi, before Roses Are Dead came out, because there were so many challenges in this song coming out, which I wrote when I was 16. 
And mom just Six, looks at wait. me. Wait, yeah. you know you've just brushed that off. Yeah. She wrote the song when she was 16. Yeah, 16, 16 years, years old. old. Like and, the, and the song has been released. Uh, actually, you have called it 1111. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Your favorite number is 11. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So 11, 11. 11, 11. So the song was written when she was 16 and it's 2022. Yeah. It's, yeah. So it's been perfected. It's like wine. It's aged well. Yeah. I've tried other producers before. I worked with So Fresh, who, by the way, is incredibly talented. Mm. We all know him as Nikita Kering's main producer. Mm -hmm. I tried other producers over 10 years. I've been just waiting, waiting to get the song right. But mom, I remember like six months, because we were going through so many, I was going through so many challenges. And I just looked at mom and I said, mommy, I'm a, I'm a just, I just quit the arts. You know me, I got straight A's. What, what is it I can't do? See, I can just go to school and study something else. And my mom looked at me and she was like, Shuka, you never know. You never know. Mm -hmm. She so sounds just, lovely. So All right, now. On. I need to... I need Be to buy her hot roses today. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, before, before we listen to Roses Are Dead, uh, is there any uh, like a party shot you'd like to tell the viewers who are watching you right now? Yeah, so... This is your camera. Yeah, so I just, I wanted to, I did want to share. So Roses Are Dead, I wrote at the age of 16 years old. And again, follow me on at I am Washuka. They probably even put it on the screen. They will have to see shamelessly plugging. But I-A-M-W-A-C-U-K-A, -A -A, Grace Washuka, you'll see me there like, Wait, is it Wasuka or Washuka? Washuka, oh. C U K A. Don't put an H, don't put an S. <laughs> it's C U K A. So Wakuka. Grace Wa Wakuka. No, Washuka. Yeah, but it's spelled Wakuka. Wakuka. Yeah, Wakuka. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like I was I, about to make a pun, but I held it back. Yeah, my, All right, my yeah. best friend's kid says, I say it's like a shoe and a car. And she's like, oh, imagine if I was a sock and a car. Wasuka. <laughs> So, um, yeah, I wrote Roses Are Dead when I was 16 years old. I was standing outside the Matron's office in Precious Blood, Riruta. I had, I was about, she was going to inspect my linen because we worked like, like that place was just labor for four years. Um, and then I had it like a full song in my head. I didn't actually write it. You know, like you sit down and you think of a rhyme. Mm -hmm. I literally felt like I was listening to a radio. And I was 16. I'd never fallen in love with anybody. I'd never experienced heartbreak. And if you listen to this song, it's like, I mean, it could be me now. It could be a 30-year-old woman, a 40 Like, it's a very bitter song. And I never understood the song. I never, there's a way that a long time ago they used to say the word genius mm -hmm. came from genie, that you have yeah, a good uh, genie. Uh. You have a good genie. So you blame your genie for everything. You don't say Grace Washuka is talented. You just say Grace Washuka's genie is... So if, the, if I do a bad song, which by the way I might, you just say it's the genie. But, but things have changed into the glorification of man now. Mm -hmm. But back then, like if you go and look at the history of the word genius, it meant that there was an outside force outside of you that would like, inspire you. So, um, yeah, I did it. I've sung it in many places all over the world, just acoustically in cafes. And so when I did this Netflix feature film that's as a lead, that's coming out next year, um, I, with some really big people, you'll see, um, I prayed to God and I <laughs> you, said, You don't want to mention some names? Um, it's exclusive. Idris Sultan, Idris Sultan, ah, yeah, yeah. Tanwa. He has like 7.5 million followers mm -hmm. in Tanzania. Eish. Tanzanians, I love you guys. You know when we're... <laughs> I love you, like I love you guys. I've been there, I love you guys. I'm actually saying things that we are talking backstage. I told yeah. her she's actually famous and she's like, no, 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 I'm not no, famous. No, and I'm like, you are famous. I know famous people, but I'm not famous. That makes you famous. Okay, we'll see. <laughs> well, let, let God be famous. <laughs> let my music glorify God. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, but... To, to end this story, um, so we went through many editions and finally Roses Are Dead was recorded January 23rd. The video was done January 23rd. It's November. So even the process of getting it done, the only thing that let me know that it was going to come out was a prayer. I asked this lady to pray for me. Um, I don't know, I was just talking, I just said my life in general. It was sometime in January. And she said to me, so God told me, not he didn't tell. He, he really did. I don't mean to do this. He told me to use what I earned from the Netflix feature Towards Roses Are Dead. I was like, what? That song? That song from mm. like, he's like, yeah. So I'm like, okay, fine. And then, um, then I was talking to this woman. She was praying for me. And then she said, I don't know what it is, but when I talk to you, I see a field of roses. And these roses are alive. And I never told her that I was doing a project called Roses, roses Are Dead. Are dead. But that 
So we went through nine months of problems. Yeah. And the only thing that guided me through that, in fact, roses are dead is, is going to come out is this woman who said she saw that roses were alive. So that's why I got you guys roses, because it's a symbol of hope. You know, mm. even if you're going through a breakup, like the lady in this video, I, I think of characters as separate people, there's still hope and your mm -hmm. roses will still live. Right. So mm. follow me on social media at I am W-A-C-U-K-A. Let's connect. If you watch this, you're inspired, you have a question, I would love to connect with you and I thank you so much. Also, we're going to be organizing giveaways mm -hmm. and prizes. We're going to be doing a campaign for Roses Are Dead. It's going to be so exciting. We're partnering with a number of companies to do this. It's going to be crazy. So if you want to win free stuff, if you want to be blessed, follow me at I am W-A-C-U-K-A on Instagram, Facebook, not on Twitter. Um, and I can't wait to connect with you. And I hope you enjoy the song. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not at 11.11. Uh, actually, I appreciate you coming. Let me just say Aww, that. Thank you. Um, you have, you're very philosophical. It's actually very interesting. And someone can listen to you for hours and hours and I hours. <laughs> So that's uh, very inspiring as oh, well. We are so, so glad to have you here. Oh. And uh, Rajiz, mm -hmm. uh, if it's not 11.11, 11, like you know, it's 9.53. Yeah. We are breaking the rules, but yeah. It's exclusive, <laughs> yeah, exclusive, exclusive so on Y254 TV. Yes. The hashtag is social uh, Friday. Uh, we are going to listen to the new song exclusively, nowhere else, uh, right here on Y254.